all right so in the last video we have discussed about the static keyword and we have seen how can you call static method from the anonymous window right in this video we're going to talk about something called void so what is this keyword called void and how does it work okay so let me just quickly create a brand new class where i'm going to go and write few codes to understand how void keyword works okay so let me create a class name what is void then i'm going to create a method inside the class name public static void let's test void method all right now here if you see void is basically a return type let's understand what is return type so what is method method is basically your calculator where you enter you input the number you input what you want to do subtraction multiplication whatever you want to do and then based on that the calculator will return the value to you correct method is also like that method inside a class is nothing but a place where you write some business logic you give some input to the business logic or you sometimes you don't give input i'm talking about this parameter when i say input okay so you give sometime input through the parameter or you don't give input and then based on your input you provide the method will start executing all the lines that you have written inside the method will start execute and in the end of that execution if you want the method to return something then you have to type here what is the type of that data that you are returning for an example what i'll do is this method i will pass um, two integer like 2 and 3 i will do some uh, multiplication or additions inside this method and whatever the sum value correct right? that value i will return to this method what does it mean theoretically it means whenever you call this method from wherever from maybe another class another button whatever right this method will actually return you summation of whatever number that you pass over here got it and because the the method supposed to return what number correct it cannot be void see whenever you write void that means that this method is expecting nothing in return that's why you write void void means null this method is expecting nothing in return the moment you type let's say integer see you'll get an error because the moment you type integer this method is expecting something in return what is that uh, it is expecting in return sorry the moment you type integer instead of void you will get an error see you got an error over here what is that error this integer if you write the keyword called integer or string or boolean or whatever data type you write here it means that this method supposed to return an integer value which it is not returning and that's why you are getting this error look at the error message it says missing return statement required return type integer so now let me just do few things and this error will go okay uh, i'm going to i'm going to quickly pass few integer value over here integer um first number comma integer second number okay and then inside this i'm going to take another variable call integer sum and uh, sum is nothing but this plus this now check it out this sum variable right this is basically an integer variable if i write here the statement call return return what this particular variable okay sum and save see now this error will go this error has gone 
Why? This method is expecting an integer type of value in the return in the end of the method and I am returning right this is why this there is no error syntactically there is no error what if I return let's say I am returning something called uh, let's say I am taking one string variable okay string some um, variable v-a-r-i-b-l-e variable okay now uh, inside this thing variable uh, what I am entering is uh, some xyz value Then, and then what if I return this variable what's gonna happen again you're gonna get the error check this out the error says illegal conversion from string to integer what does it mean it means this method is expecting an integer value in the return but what are you returning you are returning a string type of value so it says that illegal conversation you, you have to always return an integer a number value in the end of that method because it is expecting the same all right so i'm gonna return here sum before i write sum here okay let me just put control z let it be variable what if i put here string see if i now save control s it is getting saved and here we go i don't have any error why because now this method is expecting the string value in the return and that's what exactly you're returning okay so void if you write void what will happen here void means this method is expecting nothing in return but you're returning something so you get an error save this code here we go this is the error message the error message says that void method must not return a value this method is void this method is expecting nothing in the return but in the end you are returning something so you got an error all right so let me just put integer and let me just uh, return some variable now I want to show you something okay why this return I mean what is the use of this return I'm gonna use I'm gonna take one more method the method name is public static name I'm taking one more method here public static void okay this time the method is void and uh, use return value the method name is this okay check it out I have created a method the method name is this it is static it is expecting nothing in the return what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this method by the way you can call this particular method inside another method and because this line is important okay because we are calling this method from the same class you don't have to write this class name dot method name you're getting me because you're calling the method inside the same class see this is a separate method this is a separate method what are you doing? I mean, let's say this method will have few lines of code. And before you write the few lines of code, you have to call this method because this method is supposed to return something. You have to hold that return value in a variable. You have to do something. So we do this a lot. Okay. In the real coding that we will learn in future, right? There, we're going to see how to use this. I mean, we're going to use this particular um, method, method calling inside the same class or from a different class. We'll be using this a lot okay so because i'm calling this method from the same class i'm not writing class name dot method name it's just the method name but still i got an error can you tell me why i got this error mm -hmm. method does not exist or incorrect signature i hope you understand why i'm going getting this error because this method is expecting something in the parameter i'm not passing that so it's a signature error so i'm gonna pass two comma three if i save there is no error but now what is the use of this uh, this line number 10 i am calling this line number 10 what will happen this will call this method 2 and 3 will be passed here and and the summation of 2 and 3 which is 5 will be stored over here and it is returning but see i'm not using the return value this method is actually returning the 2 plus 3 5 but i am not using that so how to use it so i'm gonna use another variable use the value that's the name of the variable 
is equals to this okay and now if i print this if i print this particular variable you see what is the output of this what do you think what will be the output if i call this method not this method understand this dry run okay if you call this method what will happen line number 10 what is doing there's a variable that you have taken that's fine it is calling this method which is nothing but this and 2 and 3 will be passed line number 5 will be executed line number 6 will be executed and 2 plus 3 5 will be returned to this method and whatever has been returned to this method this is what exactly you are holding in this variable this is the syntax which we'll be using a lot in the real-time project okay so once we learn this basics of the salesforce whatever we are learning so far i'm going to show you the real code where i will use the exact same uh, signatures the syntaxes in the real coding okay so make sure you understand you type the code you see the output okay do a little bit of changes in that code when you type in in your free developer org and see how it works that's very important for you to understand not only understand when you type in the code you'll feel the code okay every single word what is the meaning of every single word you'll be able to feel it the moment you type in the code in your free developer org okay so now i'm going to save this put Control e and call this method call let me just copy this class name class name dot method name i'm assuming that you're able to understand everything yeah so if i call this execute highlighted button what's gonna happen because i have checked this box called open log okay if i check this box and click on the button it's, this gives me the log click on debug only here we go use the value the variable name use the value what is the value 5 why because same dry run right you are calling this method line number 10 what's happening it's calling internally this above method you are passing 2 and 3 calculation is happening storing in this value um, the variable called sum and that sum value has been returned and whatever has been returned you are holding it inside this variable so this is the syntax to call a method and hold the data that has been returned by this method right see i'm going to give you a real example okay why where exactly we can use it something what happened um, for an example i actually implemented this recently for another a customer where i have to score i have to write a i had to write a business logic which is actually checking so many things like the lead has given his last name or not first name or not uh, phone number or not email address or not uh, there are a few numbers things okay so whenever a, a lead was getting created every time i have to go and check a lot of things more than like 15 criteria i was checking and based on that i was giving whether this lead is qualified or not i mean uh, there's a checkbox called qualified okay so i had written a very lengthy method the method was checking what is the first name last name all the different different fields all the 15 check uh, checking it has been done inside the variable and in the end when when everything is fine i was actually returning this true so there was a the return type in that method was boolean so it is expecting either true or false so after checking everything in that method if things were fine i was returning true if things were or not fine then i was returning false and that method i was calling from a lot of places that method whatever i was written uh, which was checking the um, if the lead is eligible to go ahead or not i was actually calling that method from method from different different places and whenever i was calling that method what i have to pass i just had to pass the lead id and this was calculating every single thing for me and was returning either true or false what i had to do i just had to hold that true or false value got it so this is how uh it is the real time use of this return type in the code and uh, just to make sure return type is is what you define here and this is basically a data type whenever a method returns either the method will return the integer value or, or some other value or whatever data type that it is returning you have to type in the data type over here as the return type if you want the method to return nothing 
then you have to type here void okay uh, i hope this return type things is pretty much clear and uh, probably in the apex trigger section we will actually use this return type and we'll see how does it work okay so hope this video is clear see you in the next video